what's going on guys national master james canty the third here and today we have a jedi deep dive into the hyper accelerated dragon one of my favorite openings all time um i've had a lot of success with it i still use it i'm studying a lot of things now and i'm expanding my game but i'm a big fan of a hyper accelerated dragon so we're going to do a deep dive today look at all these different lines and stuff and stuff i recommend and playing the hyper accelerated dragon guys let's get right into it so here we go e4 is on the board here e4 and c5 the usual stuff and then we have knight f3 now you also guys you also have c3 you can see bishop c4 b3 f4 knight to c3 these are all moves that we're going to try to cover as many as we can here but let's just start with the basic right c5 knight f3 g6 and not d6 the difference here guys there's a difference between a hyper accelerated and the dragon so you guys are here oh i play the dragon that's different from the hyper accelerated dragon and the big difference here roman dg house really was one of my coaches uh for a while back in 2014 when i won twenty thousand dollars because of his content and actually he recommended the hyper accelerated dragon to me so i started playing it for the last five or six years i was playing it i just recently switched but this stuff's really good so the dragon usually you start with d6 and here we go let's do like you know d6 d4 takes knight takes knight c6 knight to c3 and then you'll play g6 in a dragon form now the problem with this now of course if they play something else is right here you're just going to be fine you're going to have razor sharp stuff now if they play this line here which is like bishop b3 bishop g7 they go f3 Knight f6, queen to d2, castles and castles. This is this is what's called the Yugoslav attack. So when you when you face this as black, you are always under fire with g4, h4, h5, and they're going to mate you. The first game, I think it's the first game in, in uh, Bobby Fischer's My 60 Memorable Games, he actually says that I had the dragon down to the science, to a science. All you got to do is castle queen side, sack, sack, mate. If you ever heard that quote before, this is what he was talking about. When you're facing the dragon, you castle queen side, and you sack your whole life over here. And it should be checkmate very soon. So the Yugoslav is very powerful, and this is very scary to face if you're playing black and you don't know what to do. Now, the accelerated dragon actually holds the d-pawn. It's actually the hyper accelerated is basically created to combat the Yugoslav attack here. So let's check it. Let's check. Same thing, same moves, just a little a uh, little bit different move order here, right? E4, C5, Knight of 3. We're going to go G6 instead of D6. Let's look at the difference. We're going to hold the D pawn, okay? D4, pawn takes, Knight takes, Knight C6, Knight C3, Bishop G7, Bishop E3, Knight F6. Okay, Knight F6, F3, castles, Queen D2. They about to go this way. Now, instead of going D6 in dragon fashion, we go D5. Strike the center, grab your lightsaber, turn it on. D5 is the move here. We strike the center immediately. So now I've had many positions like this where if they capture, knight takes. Look at all this center play. Now the queen's out. So if they castle queen side, it's just trouble everywhere. Actually, you take on A2. You can just start a new game already, big fella. Let's just get that off the screen. But after queen takes, you have knight takes C6, which is the usual. Queen takes, castle queen side, and now the engine always changes with this move. So let me actually check. But the engine usually, they'll go bishop e6, I've seen, and also bishop f5. But if you look at this on the contrary, if you actually like really look at this opening or this position, black is the one on attack now. So bishop f5 is what the engine says. Bishop e6 is the number two move. But bishop f5 is strong based off of rook f to c or rook a to c. Uh, it even take queen a4 in some lines, rook f to d in some lines, depending on if you want to give up the two rooks for the queen. It depends on what's going on. But it's an extremely uh, powerful opening here when you have the d5 uh, pawn uh, flexible and not playing d6 instead of like, you know, just, just playing d5 instead of d6 is just better. So going back, that is what the, the hyper accelerated dragon is actually about. The hyper accelerated is combated or is used to combat the Yugoslav attack. Now, let's take a look at some other things. Now that we know that, now there's pros and cons to everything. Yeah, we stop the Yugoslav, but we also face something even uh, scarier sometimes. Um, they have they, they used to say that you know the Maroxi bind was super super strong here, which it is, and it's probably one of the best ways if you want to play this as black. You need to know what you're doing against this opening right here. D4, knight takes, knight to c6. They go c4, and this is called the Maroxi bind here. And, uh, and from from Roman DG Hashvili's studies, he says that the bind has lost its deadly grip 
based off of what we're going to do here and I'll show you guys briefly we'll start with the hard stuff first because this is actually extremely hard I had some trouble with this for a while and if you are an accelerated dragon or hyper accelerated dragon player you will have some trouble with this and until you figure out how not to now every time I face this over the board I've actually I mean I've got it two or three times I think all games were a draw actually all games were a draw but they were all masters plus so not bad draws but at the same time uh, it, it, it says a lot here and you have to know the ins and outs okay so after the Meroxy buy now what this is is they're saying they're gonna stop you from playing d5 and if you try the traditional Bishop g7 which is the move order we choose in the hyper accelerated dragon they go Bishop e3 and they actually get a better version of the Meroxy buy so you know you don't want to play Bishop g7 this is a key thing to remember Bishop g7 actually helps uh, help them do exactly what they want to do after Knight of six Knight to c3 Knight to g4, I think, can be played in some lines. It's kind of weird, but usually not. Usually not. There's no knight to, uh, knight to c3. Maybe maybe even uh, knight to g4. Knight g4. Maybe even f3 is uh, stopping knight g4 first and then following up with knight to c3. So after castles, uh, knight to c3. It's just a better version for... for um, for white here now in some cases i have been studying a lot of chess lately you can also break with e6 and d5 at the right moments here but this is a little bit different usually in the king's indian defense there's some some ways that we can do this but this is not the king's indian and there are some differences the e-file is not even open there's some a lot of differences to it so uh, let's see what happens though after uh, bishop g7 bishop e3 is usually usually the response you can play this and if you do find yourself here i'll show you guys what actually happens knight to c3 castles this is a, a, a play way to play but not our way or the way i recommend you guys play against it bishop e2 d6 castles bishop d7 the idea what we're going to do is take this knight and then we're going to play bishop c6 knight d7 knight c5 and this is the usual way that you play actually in the regular Meroxy bind that i'm going to show you guys is just going to be more active than what we're playing right now so let's go back to it. Instead of bishop g7, we actually go knight f6, forcing the hand of white to either play f3 or knight to c3 in this case. Now, knight c3 is the most common. They also do have the f3 version, which kind of transposes to the same stuff, same similar positions, but knight c3 is the standard. Now, after knight to c3, now we actually go d6 instead of bishop g7, because if we go here, it's just a transposition of what we looked at before. d6 is actually the move, and there's some venom to this move here. After d6, Bishop e3, we're stopping that because knight g4 is a big boy move. Okay, you in some trouble now. And actually, I do have a YouTube video, which I'll tie this into it. I have a YouTube video that talks about actually this one right here, the Meroxy bind. And just, just focusing on the Meroxy bind itself, and we have a few lines to cover in there. But knight to g4, if bishop g5, we have queen b6 threatening f2, mate, and b2 at the same time, and the knight at the same time, and bishop g7. Oh my goodness, is getting ridiculous here. So this is not what white wanted, and they are in trouble already. The best way to proceed usually is knight takes c6, and it gets into these wild positions here. Very wild. Where white's fine, but black's fine too especially in all in game c5 or e5 which is usually responded with bishop g7 or bishop e6 if they go c5 it's bishop e6 and if they go e5 we actually go bishop g7 and after captures double the pawns and then takes here and then king c7 and then rook check and it's it, this is the, the position we have here black's totally fine black king his king still needs to figure out what to do and honestly it could be easily drawn but also black does have some good chances sometimes against these double pawns in the correct in game play so make sure your in game is on point make sure you study your in game now um what happens instead of bishop to e3 here they're actually su supposed to play bishop to e2 stopping the knight g4 action and bishop e3 can be played now so we do follow up actually now with knight takes to d4 Queen takes, bishop to g7. Attacking the queen, we can't move it anywhere because the bishop is actually undefended. So maybe bishop to e3 or bishop g5 is the usual. This is a little bit more aggressive, but ends in kind of the same positions. Bishop to e3 and castles now threatening knight to g4 because the bishop's protected now. And the queen goes to d2. Now after queen d2, we need to be active, guys. You have to be active and not just in a Meroxy bind. And every opening you play is black, especially Sicilians. You need to play active. So moves like... A6, yeah, that might work. A5, there actually are some Meroxy binds with A5, A4 um, eventually. And even right now, A5, A4 uh, from another book I've read actually is a recommendation. But Bishop to E6 is the usual. This is the most active, I think, and it's hitting the C4 pawn. Not, not really right now, but it's going to put some pressure here. We'll see F3, 
b3 rook c1 rook b1 castles these are all moves here let's just go with castles keep it simple queen a5 we stay very active and we look out for knight to d5 because eventually that can't happen it can't happen uh, in this case actually i'll just show you if queen takes knight takes c7 and then bishop takes d2 and then knight takes c4 and we pick up a pawn here or we actually we trade pawns so it's not it's not a big deal but black is very active and that's what we want we equalize very quickly queen to a5 and instead they actually go b3 or f3 let's go f3 here and defend this pawn and then rook f to c8 hitting this one why the f rook because of this trick here now this pawn's defended so if we go this way that's a big error knight to d5 we try to take it he actually takes with east on e7 with check first and if we play rook f to c8 imagine our f rook being here we could run our king over here to hit the knight so i'll actually show you what that looks like instead of going king h8 it would be rook f to c rook f to c and knight d5 queen takes if knight takes e7 now we have king f8 and after capturing back the queen king takes e7 have a nice day and we're winning now we're winning so they know this so after f3 rook f to c8 b3 happens and the main move here i've actually won many games in this position playing a6 in this move a6 right now i think the engine sometimes like b5 immediately but a6 is my favorite and if there's something like rook a to c1 then we we hit him with the power move b5 and now we looking like this is the Maroxi bind what is this how is this a Maroxi bind we actually attacking them very strong so if pawn takes we take back on b5 look at that this files open there's a lot of strength to this position bishop takes b5 that's not a move that's what it says on my hat right here rook takes c3 and we take on b5 we remove the defender and capture the bishop right after or if they take with the knight, well, then we take on d2 first. We don't care about rook takes c8 at all, ever. It doesn't matter when they do it. Then we get this. Now he's looking crazy. Rook d1, bishop e6. I've had this happen in a real game. Bishop takes b3 is my threat and hitting d2. And white is in trouble, actually, in this position here. Roxy buying very strong stuff. You always have to remember, no matter what kind of bind they're playing, you just have to make sure that we play bishop e6. Coming back from the beginning here. Okay, the right way to play it, bishop g7, no, not bishop g7, it should be knight of six, knight of six, followed by d6, and then after uh, bishop e2, taking first on d4, knight takes, bishop g7, castles to defend, they back it up, we go bishop e6, queen a5, rook f to c8, a6, and b5. This is the plan, you should have a plan in every opening you play. A bad plan is better than no plan at all, so you need to make sure you have a plan. A6, B5, Queen A5 stuff, Rook F to C8 every single time, almost every single Maroxi buy, and you should be pretty fine there. You should be pretty fine. So that's the Maroxi, guys. There's a lot to it, but that, that should get you by for a while. So now here, E4, C5, let's check out some other stuff, like some sideline stuff. G6, Bishop to C4. Bishop C4, this move will throw you off a lot because it's, it's actually, I think, called a boulder attack in some cases. But Bishop C4 is an annoying move. And you get in trouble. I've lost games here. I've been very confused here. I've won games. But here's my best take on it. After Bishop to C4, first off, you can't mix many Sicilians. So they can't try to play like, you know, G3 afterwards or even C3, D4 is one thing they'll try or Knight to C3. And I'll show you what to do on both options. After Bishop to C4, we actually follow up with Bishop to G7. Just completely putting our Bishop on the long diagonal already. And now, this is also a waiting move. Sometimes they'll play knight c3, c3, or castles. Depending on what they play, we'll play a different move as well. Shout out to my students watching this video because they've been in this position and got in trouble many times. And I've created a little like saying that goes with this. If they move the pawn, then you move the pawn. If they move the knight or castle, then you move the knight. The reason for this is that they'll try to trick you. I'll show you. If they move the pawn here, and you go knight to c6 you cannot the idea first off this is a rule or principle you have to meet c you have to meet d4 with d5 so if you can't meet d4 with d5 you are in a little bit of trouble you you're going to be cramped so let's take a, a quick example c3 and we go knight to c6 well they go d4 we can't meet it with d5 so after takes takes let's try oh, let's try d5 now but unfortunately i get d5 in first and now, in some cases, you might actually just be in an annoying position. This is not what we wanted. It's kind of weird. They still have space. Even f4 seems annoying. Bishop backs up. And maybe even something like this. And this looks crazy. 
Like, what is this? This is not what we wanted, actually. And you can, there's very, very many cases where we can go wrong here with the black pieces, to be honest. So we actually have to be prepared for this. So if they try C3, if they move the pawn, we move the pawn, E6. So now if they play D4, we capture first, and then we play D5. Now we capture, or now we have our stake in the center as well. And after D5, captures, captures, or even check. Uh, first, but after check we can play bishop d7 or knight to c6. I just like to put the bishop here and after takes I actually take with the queen because knight to c6 I want to put my knight on the natural square that it should be on So if they play the pawn I play the pawn very simple if they play the knight Well, you shouldn't be playing d5. It actually takes you an extra move to do so if they castle you can't play d5 This is actually defended three times. So you actually made an error and here is how they capitalize on that error here there's a rule, Roman D.G. Hashvili told me this, you should not play E6 and G6 when the bishop is like this, because the bishop has to choose a diagonal to be on. So what does white do? Take advantage of it, playing D4. That doesn't even look like that does anything. D4, what is it? I just capture it. But then after knight takes, then we have to highlight the, the, the problem of the D6 square here. Now maybe A6 can be played here, and maybe bishop F4 or something. Let me see what the engine does. The engine says uh, bishop e3, knight e7, so maybe not d4 in this position, maybe, oh, knight b5, that's what it is, knight b5, and now we're hitting this, and d6 is annoying in a lot of cases. Sometimes you'll even see knight b5 immediately, and that's actually what the engine likes too as well, but even knight to b5, if knight to b5 happens, there's d5, and then after captures, captures, we can take on d5 ourselves. And then after queen takes d5, let's turn this off, knight to c7, and you're in trouble already. So the rule of thumb is, if they move the knight, you need to move the knight as well. And we're going to slow build. The engine has told me that we need to slow build in this position. And what that is, is castles. Then we play d6. And then we play e6. And then we put the knight on g7, very flexible fashion. What you don't do here, oh man, I can't tell you how many times I have had this right here. Bishop g4, and I have jumped off the deep end. I found the tallest building I could find, went to the top of it, and jumped right off after playing bishop to g4. And white hits us with this move. Bishop takes f7 and laughs at you all the way home, big fella. That's not a move. Bishop g4 is in trouble. So now after king takes knight g5, and it's obvious that white is in the driver's seat. And you are in some trouble, big fella. You in a lot of trouble. So I've done that many times. So you have to play e6. And then after, uh, even bishop g5 is no good. Not, not that it's no good, it's no problem to us. We can play knight to e7 and castle and get out of the way. Sometimes this is a challenge, but you do have to remember that this is a slow build. You're going to slowly build the position. Knight to c6, d6, e6, knight g to e7, sometimes knight f6, but mostly knight g to e7. Okay, castles, d6, d3, e6. Bishop e3 is the usual knight here. Queen d2, we can even play knight d4, or actually that might be a, bl a blunder. Did he just blunder? I think d5 wins a piece. It's very funny that you, white just gets caught up playing these moves. I think d5 just wins a piece, though. And it's not technically all the way crushing. It says it's equal, but I've won many games off this position. After d5, it says best move based off of, I think the king's probably in the center. That's probably why. Let's see why. But the idea here, guys, is very clear that you're going to win some material because the bishop is hanging and also d4. Now, of course, the engine finds everything in life. But after knight takes, e takes, let's actually see why this is equal. I'm very curious to see why. Oh, it says they prefer black. We are up. And then it says bishop e6. Oh, because the king's in the center. That's exactly why. King's in the center. There's compensation. So if you play around and the rook check comes around, you could be in a lot of trouble if you're not aware of what's going on. In this position that's why i say they prefer black slightly even being up a piece so you have to be careful in some positions but again like we said you have to slow build it so after bishop let's let's try this again bishop e3 knight g to e let's see what the engine does is it just castles is that the best move no best move is still d5 yeah same thing here same thing here. and you, you see guys this is not one that is the easiest to play because there's a lot of options for for white a lot of options for black too but lots of options for white you can also play in a bot vindic fashion too is with e5 Knight G to E7 and castling as well. I play this sometimes, but I just sometimes don't like giving up this this square like this. Yeah, we take the D4 square, but we can actually be kicked, especially if something like Knight here, and then or Knight D5, Knight E7, and uh, maybe like uh, Bishop G5 and H6 here, G5. So this right here, we put a Knight on D4. The problem is we can be kicked immediately, and his can't. 
his can't, and that is a problem. That is a problem sometimes. So you just have to be aware of it, but you can play the uh, bot Phoenix system to it. Bishop g4, of course, is not a move again. So when you face this position, this is very different. You play bishop g7. If they pushed the pawn, well, we, we pushed the pawn to meet d4 with d5. If they move the knight, then we slow ball it. Knight c6, d6, e6, knight g7, and castle. That's the bishop c4 option. That does happen often. This is the delayed C3. I played a C3 Cecile for the kill, which is the C3 Sicilian. In the C3 Sicilian, of course, I do have a playlist. Make sure you guys check that out. But this is the delayed. I'm not a fan of the delayed because a lot of tricks and traps that I love to play aren't in the, the delayed Sicilian or C3 Sicilian. They're in the C3 Cecile for the kill, not the delayed one. So in the, in the delayed one, you actually play Bishop G7. You also have D5. You have many options. My favorite, of course, is Roman DG Hasvili's work with Bishop G7. And after D4, we do snap twice. And of course, when you have a center, when, there's two sides to a center, the one attacking and the one defending. In this case, you absolutely have to uh, strike the center with D5. They have captures or E5. My favorite is the E5 version. But after capturing, now we're just going to face an isolated pawn here, which is favorable for black. And of course, if there is an isolated pawn on the, on the board, you just have to figure out a way to win this. Of course, blockading it and trading the pieces around it and eventually winning this pawn. Now, of course, there's play for both sides, but uh, we prefer black just because of the isolated pawn that white has in that case. So sometimes they'll play e5, which does happen. After e5, we go bishop to g4, which is the most aggressive way. What is this about? Well, here's the plan. Remember, plans over idea or plans and ideas over the moves all the time. The plan is to actually beat down the center. How will we do that? We need a pawn break. Where is it? F6. So eventually we have to do stuff like knight to c6, e6, knight g7, knight f5, castle, f6, and after taking, queen takes, and this pawn is hit four times. Four pieces hit the d4 pawn. I'll show you. Bishop e2, okay, knight to c6, knight to c3, e6. This is standard stuff. Castles, knight e7, bishop e3, which sometimes we can take immediately or wait for h3. Capture, capture, castles, queen to d2, knight f5, okay? A lot of times h3 rook c1 all these are easy moves to make you'd be surprised at how many people don't go rook to d1 rook to c1 and an f6 capture queen takes d4 is hanging hit four different times only defended twice that means you need two extra moves to defend this pawn every time and i end up winning it every time so i have many many games like this and i have a great game when it happens every time because we are hitting a d4 pawn four separate times so this is how we combat the delayed c3 sicilian which you can a lot of tactics there a lot of stuff happens i've played many players in that particular position we also have the c3 sicilian which of course my c3 sicil for the kill now of course i still play g6 which there are some lines that are very very crafty here for both sides i actually recommend white but of course here with d5 we still have e5 bishop g7 and what does this look like a delayed c3 Bishop g4, and then we go back into what we just looked at here. That can absolutely happen. c3 Cecile for the kill, of course. Um, you also have e4, knight f3, g6, d4, and just like random stuff, um, like f4, which is no problem. We play bishop to g7 and d6 here. Let me see what else here. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight to c6. Yeah, I'm not afraid really of anything else. Like, nothing else is really annoying here. Let's go through some main line. Knight to c3, bishop g7, hitting the knight. After bishop e3, now we have knight f6. Again, the idea here is for us to go d5. This is the main line stuff. Now they have a few moves here. f3, of course, going into the Yugoslav. We'll show that again, just in case you forgot. Queen d2. What do we do in this position? Do we play dragon d6 or do we play d5? Easy answer. We play d5. And now there's a very, very uh, complicated um, decision for white to make here because we're going to destroy the center and it, we're making him do something now. As opposed to d6, uh, we waste the tempo playing d5 uh, instead of playing uh, d5 in one move. So after um, knight f6, bishop c4 is an is a ultimate move. It can, it will happen. Bishop c4 can happen. Now after bishop c4, I'll castle usually. And they have castles here and also bishop b3, which is super main line. Now, uh, we'll go with castles first. After castles, what would you play here as black? Just take a minute to look at the board here. Maybe pause the video if you like. But take a second, and what would you actually play here with black? You have two moves, d6 and knight takes c4. Knight takes c4 is the more active. I'm a fan of this one. And if they play bishop takes f7, the idea 
Actually, first off, let's just look at this. We have a nice center. Queen a5 is a move. We also have d6. I like the queen a5 version of it, and then d6, and uh, rook f8, and bishop f5. It becomes very active, very, very active. But um, also, the, the idea here is after knight takes, we actually play d5, and we're getting our material back, and we've equalized already. So after bishop d3, that's a problem, because then we actually sometimes win material, either here or with knight takes d4, and it's just kind of weird looking. And white has a lot of options. But he needs to be careful. The best line is actually knight takes, pawn takes, and then bishop back to d3. And now his bishops look pretty nice, but also, I mean, we have our own ideas. We can take on b2. If you want to keep the queens on, you can play queen c7, or you can play just bishop a6 and start simplifying very quickly. Very, very quickly. It can happen. I've actually had stuff like this happen where they go here. I've taken on b2. They've taken here. I've taken back. They went rook to d1 and almost lost the rook, maybe like playing rook to c8. And then the missing the bishop c3. This is a very common thing that can happen. Missing the bishop c3 in some cases traps the rook, but maybe not in this one. So if something like, I don't know, bishop d3 or bishop f3, just be aware that this is here and the rook is almost trapped. In some cases, it does happen. I have had that before. Just weird move orders that work out for us. So that happens after bishop to c4 and castles. Usually you'll see bishop b3. There's also another line I like to talk about in, in any chess game. Sometimes you cannot mix, you can't mix Sicilians. Sometimes there are things like the dragon dwarf, meaning like you're playing the knight dwarf and the dragon, which is like very complicated and like I just don't play it because you, it's just too many ways to go wrong. But at the same time here, white has some ways where they can try to play both. So they'll play f3 and then we'll castle. We're thinking they're going to go queen d2, Yugoslav, we're ready for it. But then they go bishop c4, stopping your d5 push, so now they can play queen d2. But the problem here is he tried to mix two Sicilians. He tried to play bishop c4, boulder attack kind of stuff, and f3 in a Yugoslav fashion. That's a problem, and loose pieces lose games. I like to say this all the time. There are tactics around it. And what do you do here as black? If you have it, great job. If you don't know the move, take a minute here. Take a few seconds, 30 seconds or so. Pause the video and see if you can find the best move for black. The best move for black here, guys, is actually queen to b6, a direct move. Lots of things that can happen. Looks crazy. I'm stepping right into some type of x-ray that can maybe be hit with knight f5. Well, let's take a look at this. Okay. What if we go bishop b3? Standard stuff. They're just defending. And this is a main line Sicilian kind of move anyway. Well, here we are. This is why we did it. Tactics win games. Knight takes e4. Hit the man with a move. The d4 knight is hit three separate times here. So you are indeed in trouble here, big fella watch what you do so no matter how we take on e4 let's take with the pawn we can take with the knight or the bishop here bishop takes knight takes usually queen takes is the best and just going to a simplified end game where we're up a pawn here and uh it's easier for black to play that happens that way now of course it will get very tricky sometimes and they might play stuff like knight d5 knight a4 let's try knight a4 where that loses on a spot due to queen to b4 because this is a loose piece c3 that defends this one but you lose the other one that's not a move. So how about uh, knight f5? This was a crazy one. Knight f5. That one looks good. But that's why we play queen takes b2. You can't take this bishop because this knight is defending it. So we take on b2 first, hitting the knight. Also, this one's attack. So what if they try knight takes g7? You be, you <laughs> believe it, guys. I have had this happen. Knight takes g7, g7, queen takes c3. We take a piece. You took a piece. Now I'm taking something with extra or with interest. Queen takes c4, and now this one's hanging too. He's in a lot of trouble here. A lot of trouble. Also, we have um, queen takes b2, knight a4. Knight a4 is queen to b4, taking on the bishop here. And also, this is hanging to c3. We win a piece. And thanks so much for the game. Thanks so much for the game. Wild move. Queen b6. Nothing works here. Nothing at all works. He's in a lot of trouble. How about here? Knight takes knight f5. Knight f5 has happened before, and this is a little bit different. Your knight and your queen's hanging. But this is hanging. Well, best move for here is actually a knight takes c3 hitting the queen. So we're capturing a piece and hitting his queen as well. So if you take mine, I take yours. And no matter what you do, I'm going to take something else. If you take this knight, I'll take this bishop first, actually, and then uh, takes and takes. And we're up a piece. And we're up a piece regardless in this in this uh, case. What about knight takes or uh, knight takes queen? How about the, taking this one? It's more or less the same thing. We actually take this bishop because we let him get away if we take the knight. So we need to take the bishop, and then we get an extra piece here. Ouch. And he's losing once again. Crazy line. 
you can't mix the civilians here. So if you ever see this setup, queen b6, and he's in some trouble. He is in some trouble. So going back to this, I think this is probably one of the last lines here. Here After bishop g7, bishop b3, knight f6, bishop c4. Main line stuff. After castles, they actually go bishop b3. Avoiding knight takes e4. Avoiding queen b6. They just put the bishop on a safe square, Bobby Fischer style. Bishop c4, bishop b3. Now, best moves for, for white here, you have d6, I've seen before, followed by bishop d7, taking and playing b5, a5, or you can play, of course, the Roman DG House Ridley lines, which are knight a5, queen a5, and a5. I like the a5 because this is the one, first one I've ever learned, and it's very fun to play. I just like it, and it gives some space to black here. Now, after a5, they have a few moves, a4, or even just castles, and uh, this gets kind of boring, I would say, positional. It's just positional chess here. And I'll show you a few lines. If um, I think that the funniest one is F3. This is probably the fun one. After F3, you actually go D5. This one gets crazy tactical. Pawn takes. You have knight takes and bishop takes too. It gets real deep. But if pawn takes knight B4, and we're actually threatening this. So if they back up, then we play A4. And this gets wild. A4, what is this about? Well, we're taking a protection off of the D5 pawn. So this gets really nasty here, and tactics and all kind of things can happen. Bishop takes, I mean, knight takes, I'm hitting this one. Knight takes, knight takes, I'm hitting two pieces. I'm actually winning material here. Just that simple, off a few trades, we're already winning material. So it's already in trouble there. So the classic line, F3, I've actually won over the board in Millionaire Chess versus, I think, Kevin Davidson or Donaldson, something like that. I think it was Davidson, but master and uh he was like 2300 and i'd be played over the board and we actually went into this line got kind of wild kind of wild and actually we ended up winning in nice fashion there one upon out of the opening so after bishop to b3 a5 a4 and a nice move here actually played by kramnik kramnik played black pieces uh a long time ago in this position knight to g4 is what was played looks like the knight is hanging whoa but also your knight is hanging queen takes so we're dynamic dynamic guys knight takes d4 Rook to d1, takes and uh, takes and d6 happens. Very interesting game. Very interesting. It happens all the time. A4 is a move. Um, A5, castles is the usual. Castles happens, and then after castles, we play d6. And this is probably the most positional way to play. They have f4, f3. f3 is usually the standard. They also have h h3 too. h3 happens. After h3, the plan, always have a plan. And just remember the plans and ideas. Take on d4. Play bishop d7, so we're threatening a4 or b5 in most cases. They play a4, we put the bishop on c6. So now the bishop's hitting this. We're also helping playing d5, but the main idea is knight d7, knight to c5. So you have knight to d5 themselves. We actually don't even trade. We play knight d7 first. Bishop takes, king takes. And this gets literally super positional, guys. Rook to d1, bishop takes, or even knight c5 first. Then I capture. And there's a lot to it, and this is very, very positional. It's a slow game. You want to make sure that you guys uh, are aware of your assets. You have the C file. Um, you also have a very active knight on the C on the C5 square. You can also take this knight, and the idea is that well, his white's bishop is on um is 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 in trouble. He's actually not that good of a bishop because the pawns are on the same color as this bishop. So you have to be aware of that. 100%. I think that's everything to cover today, guys, and, and the, and the, uh, accept, the hyper-accelerated dragon of the, of the Sicilian. This was one of my favorites. Actually, you know what? We, we actually do have another one. Let's go through this. Queen takes d4. We haven't looked at any of these. Queen takes d4. I actually got this how many times over the board? One, two, three. I'm two and a half out of three. One draw and two wins against this over the board um all all 2100 plus knight of six e5 knight c6 a lot of a lot of tricks here queen c3 i play this nice move e6 and then after taking bishop b4 very funny very funny but the main line stuff if somebody plays queen takes d4 a lot of times they actually know what they're doing so knight to c3 is usually the best move here oh no i actually had this four times so was it um three out of four no losses just two draws and i have a draw against kodrick davis who was a U university of texas at dallas at the time i think he was the first board he's a grandmaster and uh after queen takes d4 he played knight c3 after i played knight f6 i played knight c6 he played queen a4 i played d6 and e5 now this is the regular line you can actually take with the pawn here which is your regular stuff or you can play this pawn sacrifice which is um 
a lot of times like it's not the most sound but a lot of times you don't want to play the most sound stuff you want to sometimes like throw people off and in this game actually after the game he actually told me like hey i never seen this move and i was like what you've never seen this and i was like oh roman dg has got the secrets i was hype right because i got to draw after this but i already knew this was theory based off of what i know so knight to g4 after pawn takes is bishop g7 we can do a nice little pawn sacrifice the idea is after pawn takes queen takes we check bishop b2 castles castles and bishop takes c3 ouch we are losing we're giving up our dark square bishop our favorite piece but we're actually picking up a piece in the end queen takes c2 rookie one loses immediately queen takes f2 we're just up everything so a uh, uh, terrible game terrible game here but in the game, I actually think he played, a, he did capture, and I played a bishop g7, and he went bishop b5. And I think I still castled or played bishop d7 here. I think I might have castled. And, he, and the idea is after capture, capture, if queen takes, I have rook b8, and I just have a lot of play. I've sacrificed a pawn or two for material, for uh, and for development, sorry, not material, for development and active pieces. And bishop b7 followed by bishop takes f3 is going to devastate his position. In some cases here, I mean, he's in trouble. Like, where do you actually move the queen? Queen a4, but then I just take this and then maybe play knight e5 now. I'm, I'm hitting f3. I just have a lot of counterplay. And like, if pawn takes, takes. Rook b4 can swing over to h4. Hey, this could be a very decisive attack extremely fast based off of this pawn sacrifice with knight to g4. So a very nice way to play, guys. You can play this knight g4 way all the time and um and go from there so all right guys we've covered a lot today in the hyper accelerated dragon of the sicilian hope you guys learned a lot today and start implementing what you learned today if you got any questions or any problems of course just put the comments in the chat guys make sure you share this video like subscribe uh, thank you so much for watching the video i'm national master james canty the third aka gm canty i'll see you guys on the next video